Good morning. Man, I was anticipating problems and there wasn't any. How about that? <laughs> I heard some that uh, Facebook updated their live thing and so some uh, guy, a couple of artists that I follow last night said they couldn't do their live because they had updated it and it was a mess. And I was like, oh no. So I was holding my breath and it came up. Hello, here I am. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> I've only had one cup of coffee. No, I haven't had two. I promise. <laughs> anyway, but I'm fixing to have a second cup. When I finish here, I will have my second cup. Anyway, that's the first thing I do when I finish here, just about. Anyway, I hope you're having a great morning. I hope you're having a great week. Man, this week's halfway over. That means we have less than a week left in October. It's already November, and November is Thanksgiving, and that means family. And uh, my family's growing. We had two babies this year. Not me. Not me, but I've got two great, a great nephew and a great niece this year. So uh, this is awesome. I like that, you know. But anyway, uh, uh, so it's almost Thanksgiving. Wow. So I'm, I'm thinking about taking a Thanksgiving theme for this next month. But I don't know. Give me some thoughts. I don't know. I, I might and I might not. Anyway, this morning, uh, I'm just going to be, I'm just going to throw it all out there, okay? So look out. Look out. Now I titled this Look Up because we're not going to look out anymore. We're going to look up. And I talked about our focus and and what we're focusing on um was it last week or the week before i was talking about the giants and how the the children of israel went to the spies went in and they they looked at the giants and said they're big they're big we can't do it and david went and faced goliath and he looked past goliath at god and went that giant's little when you compare him to god right so if you compare your giants and your problems with your circumstances they're going to look bigger but if you compare the giants and problems and your circumstances with god and his ability then the giants look smaller right i hope i said that right because i had it all right in my head i hope it came out right <laughs> yeah anyway so i uh, so this morning i i had this i have this problem with chris's finger and it's still just nobody's listening to me right i've asked for an x-ray and all that so i had i did so i was praying this morning i was like what am i gonna do so i thought okay today here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna put it back where it goes and tape it to the other finger so because it just looks off it just looks i don't know i don't know what i don't even know who to call at this point so anyway hopefully they'll come x-ray it today but i i have an idea so i'm going to try that today if if I can, but, and that gave me some, a sense of relief, just having something I can try, okay, anyway, and so, but when something like that happens, uh, when something like that happens, I go off on the extreme, right, I'm an overthinker, I will, I will gladly admit I'm an overthinker. I, I think all the way how horrible it could be and all the way how the best it could be. And of course, the best would be if God just healed it. That would be wonderful. And I know he can do it, <laughs> right? And so in my thinking, I got really frustrated. And, and I was a little bit frustrated with God. And you know what? When I'm frustrated with him, I tell him that. The psalmist did. Remember we read it probably last week. I, I've read it. I personally read it a lot. Psalm 13 where the psalmist says, how long are you going to just look the other way? Am I just going to have this sorrow in my heart and you just go on with whatever you're doing in the world and you don't see me? You know, when you have those feelings, just tell him. That's part of having a relationship is being able to be honest. Who are you hiding it from? If you're disappointed with God, it's not like he doesn't know. He, you know, you're not going to say, God, I'm just really disappointed. I don't, and I don't know what to do. And him go, he's not going to say, oh, I, I didn't see that coming. I didn't. You're disappointed, really? No, he already knows before you even feel it. He knows when you're sad. He knows when you're upset. He knows when you're distraught. He knows when you have fear. You can't hide it from him. You might as well. And, and to build a relationship takes that honesty Inte have some integrity with yourself and some have some integrity with God and just tell him how you feel you're not going to surprise him you're not going to catch him off guard right and so I was telling God how I felt and and I was like I don't know what to do God and and I'm, I'm kind of upset about this and, and and it doesn't seem like you're even listening and and I don't know what to do and I thought you know what I'm going to go read I, I thought I don't even know what to read to encourage myself you know we, we read that David is that when uh, all of his wives and children and stuff was taken from Ziklag. It said he encouraged himself. And they were blaming him. The, so he was like caught, right? They were blaming him. They'd lost everything. It was not looking good. He thought they were go, maybe going to kill him. And it says he encouraged himself in the Lord. And so I thought, oh, what does that mean? You know, you know, go trust him. You remind yourself to go trust God. So I thought, okay, I'm going to go back to Psalm 31. You know, I wrote a whole devotional about it. I don't have one handy. 
But, you know, I, I spent 31 days in Psalm 31 because I, there's so much in this psalm. And so I thought, I'm just going to go back to what I know. And I went back and I read Psalm 31 this morning and I noticed something new. Yeah, that's the coolest thing about God's word is when you come back, he's going to show you something different. There's nothing different in there. And God doesn't change. But your perspective helps you see something different. Maybe it's a different attribute of God or a characteristic of him or an emotion you didn't expect to get from him, right? Or something. And in this time when I read it through, I realized that the psalmist, David, shifted his focus all through this psalm back to God. Off of the circumstances, off of the giants, off of the fears, off of the disappointment, off of whatever was getting his focus. He And several times he said, you, because he starts out going, okay, God, I'm going to put my trust in you. you be my rock. You are my rock. He reminds himself. He does all the things he always does. He declares. He reminds himself. He prays, right? But right in the middle, he's, he says, he's praying and he's going, you know, I know you're my strength. Into your hand I commit my spirit, which is what Jesus uh, quoted on the cross, by the way. You have redeemed me. And so in the last part of verse 5, it says, You have redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. So he's turning his focus and going, You, you, you God, you redeemed me. You, you took me back. You bought me back when I didn't think I was worth it to anybody else. You have redeemed my soul. Right? And so then if you go on down uh, in verse 7, he, he's still talking about, uh, you know, he says, You have considered my trouble. God sees what you're going through. You have spoken. You have known my soul in adversities. You know what? People don't know what to do with you when you walk, when you live in the furnace. People don't know what to do with you when, you, when, you're, when you're walking through trials that just don't go away, right? Because we're supposed to pray and everything bad's supposed to go away, right? No, it doesn't really happen that way. That's a fantasy somewhere, right? So, so and God doesn't do that. He knows our soul in adversity. He knows our thoughts, and that could be scary. He knows our feelings. He knows our emotions. He knows everything that makes us us, and he doesn't abandon us in adversity. He doesn't go, I don't know what you're going to do. Come back when you come back when things aren't as bad, you know. And, and literally, people walk away when you walk through something hard for years, because they don't know what to do. I'm not faulting them. I'm not. I'm not condemning. I'm just saying they don't know what to do. They don't know how to. Do just be Job's friends and just sit there and say nothing. Our world doesn't know how to sit there and say nothing ever, right? And so God doesn't abandon us in those adversities. He walks with us through whatever life brings our way. You know, we've talked about several times how Jesus walked out to the disciples in the middle of the storm. He didn't sit on the bank and go, look, when this all calms down, then I'm going to go get them guys. <laughs> he went out in the middle of the storm and he he will walk in our storms with us. Well, what's that old song? I think Dottie Rambo wrote it and Vestal Goodman sang it. Man, that takes back some memories. Uh, God walks the dark hills. He walks those spaces with us. He doesn't say, come back when you feel lighter. Come back when you feel better. Come back when you got it all together. I don't know what to do with you. It's dark in there. I'm not going and you let me know how it goes. No, he, he walks through those places with us. He doesn't abandon us. He knows our feelings. He knows when we feel distraught. He knows what we're trying to process. And he offers so much help to help us process it, just like I processed it this morning in Psalm 31. Then he goes on, David goes on uh, in verse 8, you have set my feet in a wide space. That's in a good space, right? That means he's he sets our feet in a solid place, where we a place where we can trust in him. And then it goes on. Down and it says, let's see, let me find another one. I circle them all. You will hide. Let's see, how great is your goodness? Okay, now I'm taking my eyes off of what I'm going through. I'm taking my eyes off of the pandemic, which is when we started this devotion three years ago, right? I'm taking my eyes off the pandemic and I'm going to look at God and go, I'm looking at your goodness, God, because his goodness doesn't change based on my circumstances. He's always good. He's always good. Right, and it's become cliche, but we only use that cliche when things go our way. 
that rhymed. I'll make a poem on it later if you want me to. <laughs> right? We we on Facebook, you know. Oh, somebody. This was this happened. I prayed for this, and and somebody got healed, or somebody. We got the money, or we got this, or we got that. God is so good, and I'm like, we don't say this really bad thing happened. God is good, but He's still good. Right? His goodness doesn't is isn't isn't contingent upon our circumstances and our perception of life, even right. He's good. How great is your goodness, which you have laid up or stored up, the old King James says, for those who fear you, which you, he's focusing on God. What has God done? He has prepared that goodness for us in the middle of our storm, in the middle of our, of our strife, in the middle of whatever we're going through, right? He goes on down and he says, uh, in, in the presence of, the, okay, you shall hide them, us, those of us that are trusting him, in the secret place of your presence. Oh, now my whole, my whole, I'm feeling good now. You, I'm focusing on him. God will keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues, the, the, the strife of life, the bad things going on around us. And so in this psalm I saw this morning that David shifted from focusing on what was going on around him to the attributes of God. That's a powerful thing if we can do it. It's as powerful as David standing in front of Goliath going, God's going to deliver you to me today. And looking at God instead of looking at Goliath. Right? How dare you blaspheme the name of my God. He's going to deliver you into my hand today. And he did. He stood there knowing, no doubt, that God was going to give him Goliath that day. And we can stare at our, we can look at our circumstances and then look past them at God because God already gave us peace. We've talked about this, right? He gave us peace, his mercy, he, his grace is sufficient. He's going to carry us through it. He's not going to abandon us in the middle of whatever we're going through, good, bad, or indifferent, right? He's got us. And so we got to take, change our focus and look to him rather than our circumstances don't let circumstances have all your emotions right if you're sitting in that boat in a storm start looking across there for jesus to come walking on your water right because he is in that storm with you he's not waiting for you on the other side he's got you no matter what you're facing he's given you his peace his grace is sufficient i totally encouraged myself this morning and i hope i encouraged you too you guys have a great day peace out and I'll see you tomorrow.